is you have to give StreamYard permission. So say hello. Let me know that you can see me and hear me. While I sit here and dance. Hi, can you hear me? Okay, you guys are just showing up as Facebook users. So there's Kimberly. Okay. <clears throat> yep. You just need to, if you're joining, you have to go to like streamyard.com and let's see. Otherwise, what I see is this. See that? That's what I see you at. I don't see your names unless you give Streamer permission. So um, learn more. Okay, no, that's not it. I don't know. That's okay. I'll, that's why I have my phone up and the screen so I can um, try to see what your comments are. But you have to Streamer is funny. They don't. They don't want to. Maria, you can hear me, but I can't see your 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 name so see oops that's what it looks like oh so funny anyway um once you give stream error permission you only have to do it once and then anytime you comment on one of my lives it will show your name to me on this end but anyway looks like you guys can hear me say hi let me know you're here what's everybody doing today while we wait for people to find us, I am still working on the live showing up inside the Facebook event with StreamYard, still trying to figure that out. But this is better than last time when it couldn't go live in my own group. So we've made progress. Yeah, see you guys, I can't see your, that's what I see, that's a bummer. But anyway, um, <clears throat> all right. Say hi. Tell me where you're where you're streaming from. Are you in the US? Are you outside the US? Tell me what city you're in or what country while we're waiting for everyone to join. So that I'm not the only one talking because I don't like that. You're in the UK. Where in the UK? Florida, Natalia, you're in the UK, Bethany. So I have to look at your comments here so that I can see your names. Otherwise, you're all just a bunch of anonymous messages. Oh, there's my husband just joined the live. Hi, babe. <laughs> Billy's in Florida. It says I can bring you on camera, Ted. Should I do that? Newcastle. Mm. I only know about um, the UK from Jane Austen. So Newcastle. Lovely. I've never been to the UK. Julianne's here. Lincoln in the UK. St. Louis-ish. Well, if you don't know, I live in Colorado. I actually live just south of Denver in the suburbs and it's a lovely day here in May in Colorado. Sunny, so people are saying hi. All right, um, keep telling me where you're from, but this is cool because then these comments will keep the live pumped up. We've got 12 people on. All right, so, hello, say hi. Um, so here's what I wanted to talk about today. We can veer off, but I wanted to at least talk about can you see your name? No, Billy, I can't. I see Kimberly Brown, Kim Brown. Her name is showing up. This is what I see when someone, Missouri, when someone has given uh, StreamYard permission, this is what shows up versus like something like that. And I, there is like a, a URL. Of course, I don't have it right this moment. It's like StreamYard.com, blah, blah, blah. It's a backslash something. It's annoying. So Kim, you're the only one I can see. Missouri, okay. Are you a Mizzou fan? All right. So today, um, one of the things I wanted to talk about, and we can we can certainly talk about more things. I wanted Chicago. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about pricing because 
this past week specifically, here's a topic, paid ads. I can't see your name. So this is super fun. Um, oh, look at this. I can pin your comments. How fun is that? Mizzou fan. So I'm a, I'm a KU fan, Kim. We're bitter rivals, you and I. Rock Chalk Jayhawk national champions. Say what? Okay. So um, I wanted to talk, one of the things I want to talk about briefly was uh, pricing because this week there were, I would say, an, an increase in posts about pricing, specifically um, people being frustrated about losing money, um, being confused or frustrated about having, you know, how much that um, they lost in a sale to fees, et cetera. So I wanted to talk a little bit about pricing. Um, we can talk about ads, somebody that just mentioned that. <clears throat> um, I can mention ads. Yep, anything else that you want me to cover, we can. So this, and I even, I did some, um, I did a TikTok video about this. Um, Oh, hey, Julie. See, Julie's Julie's comment shows up. That's how you do it. Someone finds that web URL. Can you post it in the comments for everyone else? Next time I'll have it ready. Okay, so um, in general, this is one of the things that is so important. Like, I mean, yes, you have a quality product, passion for your product. Uh, maybe the next thing is you have to know how to price your things to get profit. Because if you're not going to be profitable at all, streamyard.com, Facebook, Julie, thank you. Billy, I can see you. Okay, everybody. So Julie Cook has put the streamyard.com, Facebook. You just have to give streamyard permission to show me your comments, not going anywhere else. That way I can address you directly without having to go like back and forth. When people go Facebook Live and they're always like, over here, it's because we can't see, can't see who you are. Um, back to the issue at hand. So pricing for profit, and I, I've i seen this, I see it all over social media, I see it in the group where we're surprised by the amount of fees and costs that there are to sell on the platform of Etsy or anywhere, we're surprised, which we should not be surprised. I understand when you're starting out, sometimes not, that's one of the things that you don't do a deep dive on. Um, when I pull up some slides, I'll show you where you can find information about, sorry, about all the Etsy fees so that you understand ahead of time how much you're going to make because that's the key to this is if we're not making any kind of profit, this starts to be not so fun after a while, right? I mean, you can do it for a hobby, but if you're on Etsy and you're paying the Etsy fees and they're not cheap, you want to make it worth your while. Um, and there's nothing wrong, let me say this again, there's nothing wrong with wanting to profit from your business. You're not selfish, you're not greedy, this is business. And we have financial needs for our families and ourselves. And you don't have to justify that to anyone. So pay yourself what you're worth. We'll talk about that. And make sure that you're considering all of that when you're starting out. Who let me know by a show of hands. Do you have trouble with pricing and or profit and fees? Put it in the comments and we'll we'll talk about it. Okay. All right. So let me bring up. Let me bring up some stuff here. Add to stream. Hey, look at that. I'm always like thrilled when these slides work because, okay, let me try to get to, I had, this is the press, I did this previous presentation um, that I wanted to show you this. Yeah, we'll look at this. So this is the number five. Yeah, who has trouble? Yep. I hear you, Julianne. Yep. Um, and Julianne, I was looking at your, your shop the other day. I feel like your prices are super low. I meant to tell you that your, your cups, which, um, look like they take a lot of time. I don't think you're pricing high enough, but anyway, we can come back to that. So this is the number five mistake that sellers make when I did that, um, live training pricing, not treating your shop like a business, even a hobby shop, even if you're just doing this to have enough for craft supplies, 
it's still a business. You know, once you put your things on Etsy in, in terms of, you know, whether or not you want to make a lot of money or just a little bit of money, you've essentially become a business. So not pricing your items correctly, undervaluing yourself, not paying yourself a living wage, not paying attention to the Etsy fees, tracking revenue and expenses, and then not investing in your business and treating it like it is. It's a business. So we can talk about all that. Okay, so Natalia is saying, this is a question. I'm not sure how to price, and I'm just looking at other shops. It's still the same. Yeah, I mean, I would say we've all been there. Um, I'll tell you what someone else charges for their products has nothing to do with you because you don't know how much they've paid for those materials. You don't know how much they're charging themselves. You don't know if they're making any money. You don't know if they're running ads. You don't know if they have a, a staff. So while that may be like part of the, and what I'll talk about my, um, in the plus group and I have a brand new pricing course, part of the, the pricing experience is to look at other shops and sort of get a sense for what the market is currently doing. And then you put that aside and you do your own calculations because what your costs and what your fees and what you need to live on is going to be different than someone else's. Okay, so it's not wrong to look at other shops, but don't let that be how you determine your pricing. Okay, um, I thought, let me see, I thought I had a handle on the pricing because of the lessons. You mean in, oh yeah, the plus and realize you wasn't making a profit. Yeah, so the tax stuff, you and me both. So I'll tell you this story and it's it's in the lessons as well. So Julian's talking about the Underachievers Plus group where we have an entire module about pricing. When I was starting, if my husband's still on the, the live, he's up in his office like spying on me probably. I was doing my business probably for about six months and he asked me one night what my profit margin was. <laughs> I didn't know. I had no clue. I didn't even know what he was talking about. And I was just excited I was getting sales. When I did the math, I was not making money. In fact, I was just barely breaking even. And I was devastated because my intention was to contribute to the family income. That's why I started this. Part of it was so that I could have some additional, you know, another stream of revenue. And I wasn't making any money when I did the math. So that was devastating to me, um, especially because it here I am like putting myself forth as a, a coach and an expert and I wasn't doing it right. This is an example that I give in the plus group and in the pricing course, because this was one of the things that I really took a, a bath on. I, um, and it just talks about all the fees that go into selling on Etsy. When I look, so I looked at all the fees and I realized that I wasn't paying myself any kind of an hourly wage. Okay. None. I wasn't giving my, my time any value, which is something that we do as, as makers and artists. Um, so I, and I was looking at the materials and then just sort of like putting the price, like right above the materials and the fees. Um, and this is up here is it doesn't, it doesn't the, like on stream area, it doesn't populate in, in a way that makes sense. But this was me before I had these wooden spoons, uh, I used to pay for shipping, so it was free shipping because I thought that's what I had to do to be competitive. And the Etsy fees, the shipping label that I was paying for, uh, the materials, right? And then the profit was $6 for this item. Um, that wasn't enough for the time. I wasn't paying myself for the 30 to 45 minutes it took me to make this item. So when I adjusted my pricing, this was the new price, but I looked at the fees. Um, these were... 5% fees, previous fees, then the shipping label, I wasn't paying for. You still have to pay the shipping transaction fee here. That's what Etsy still charges me when I buy a label elsewhere. That's out there. That's in the, in the, in the handbook. So the buyer pays the shipping label. The materials are still the same, but look at how much more profit I made. And the difference was including labor. Okay, so I went in, found a labor calculator for my area of the country and tried to find some kind of a labor rate that I felt good about and didn't, you know, didn't feel like I was, I don't know, if I was still getting paid, but it wasn't like I was charging myself at the very top. I picked something and now I include it in if, you know, if an hour's labor for me is, let's say, $14. So if it takes me half an hour, you know, you do some math there. 
and you give yourself some padding. So now I make on these spoons, um, at the time anyway, $16. So that's an extra $10 in profit. Same time, same materials. People still buy the spoons. People still buy the spoons. Raising this price from $17 to $24.95 and making the buyer pay for shipping did not kill my business. I don't care what other people are charging. This is what I have to do. At the end of the day, I'm running a business. I'm not giving stuff away for free. So this is so important. Um, I wanted to talk about, of course, I can't even see my own. I, I'll, I'll move this down in a minute. Um, I have a new course called Pricing for Profit. And let me grab the link. It's um, all about why pricing matters. There's even some psychology in there about different ways that we price and why as makers, we struggle so much with paying ourselves what we're worth. Why do we do this? I still do it. I find myself undervaluing my own work all the time. Okay, so why do we undervalue our work? Why do we struggle with pricing something fairly in order to make profit? Why do we feel guilty about it? Okay, and then um, down here are the, oh, that's not good. The Etsy seller handbook has a section all on, let me see if I can find it. Here it is, I'll grab the link. Fees. Here's the handbook. Oops. I can't even post it here. Oh my God. Can't post comments to Facebook. So, all right. So I'll do that. Um, I'm going to read your comments from it. So I'm going to send this to myself because I need to post it. And all right. There's that. Give me one second. Um, and I'm reading your comments here while we do this. So here is the pricing course. It's brand new. Nobody's taken it yet. I'm starting it at an introductory price, probably for about a week before it goes up to its regular price. Um, I'm telling you guys, and I mean, I was in the plus group. We had, her name is Mandalee Sparks. I don't know if she's on here, but I had her come in. She's a money mindset coach. And I had her come in and do a training basically on all the reasons why we might be limiting ourselves financially. It was really eye-opening for me because nobody teaches, nobody teaches you how to be a business owner at all, but we certainly don't talk about the reasons why we might be undervaluing our own work and why we feel like we have to set our prices the lowest we can and why we have to you know, be the lost leader or why, you know, I can't charge more because so-and-so doesn't charge more. It's not true. Okay. So let me grab these links. So in the seller handbook, there's a section all about Etsy fees. You need to get up to speed on the fees before anything. There should be no surprises when, here it is. Sorry, you guys, this is still working on. This is the Etsy fees, the seller handbook. I've just posted the link read all the fees, especially now that they've increased um, some of the fees that we pay to sell on this platform. They, you know, the, pro the transaction fee went from five to 6%. We're not discussing it. It is what it is. But um, did you all adjust your prices? Did you absorb that charge? Did you, when, you know, for me, when lumber went up during the pandemic, did you just absorb that cost? I did not. I can't. I mean, I'm a business. You know, when the cost of leather goes up, Nike doesn't just take a hit. They increase their prices or they find different suppliers or they change the way that they make their products, their shoes. They don't just take it on. OK, but as small business owners, I think sometimes we feel like we have to take that hit um, because no one will no one will buy this at a higher price. It's not true. OK, so anyway, back to. Um, this issue and then I can go back to, yeah, I have a pricing spreadsheet um, that I used and now I sell it in my shop. If you don't know, how, you know, what those calculations are automatically, it does the math for you. You put your, the cost of your materials and you put any additional fees, like if you're doing, um, if you're getting offsite ads or you're paying some different fees, you add it there and it kind of tells you where you can price your things for the most profit. Um, and they have those free calculators online too. 
So somebody was asking, change your supplier. Okay, what's this say? I changed my supplier and adjusted half of my listing prices. Need to finish that. Yeah, finish it. You deserve to get, this is the URL for the pricing for profit course if you want to look at it. Um, it's brand new. It's got three modules. It's all about why it's so important to price. It goes through some of that psychology. Then it talks about how to calculate your labor, how to calculate the costs of things, what all the fees are, and then what are the resources to do that. So there's a um, living wage calculator link. There's you know resources to free calculator, pr free pricing calculators, other pricing calculators. Okay, um, tracking revenue and expenses is not in the course, but it's sort of it goes hand in hand. Once you price your things and you start to get in a groove, uh, you have to know at the end of the year or when you do your taxes, how much money did you make, right? What was your revenue? And then what were all the expenses, all the supplies you paid for? If you, you know, your underachievers plus membership can go in there, your, you know, whatever, E-rank, whatever you're paying for, those are all your expenses. And that will tell you how you did for the year. Um, you changed supplier. Okay. So let me look at this. I've, uh, this I've paid, I pay shipping myself. So would you recommend doing it through Etsy? I wouldn't know where to start. You wouldn't know where to start, where to buy a shipping label. Is that what you're asking? I can't see who made this comment, but, um, let me see Natalia. So you can, let me think of how to say this. Don't let that be a reason why you're paying for shipping. You can, very basic, you can use Etsy to buy a shipping label. Um, I don't know if I can share it here. Share, let's see, share screen. I don't know if I can do that. Let me see. I don't know. I don't know if I can share my screen. Like I'm not, I'm not good at this. Um, window, Chrome tab. Okay. Let's go here. I don't know if you guys can see, let me see if see now I have to go look and see if you can see my screen. Um, here we go. They, these are the Etsy fees. You need to read those, but let's go to, let me go to my, um, <clears throat> so when you come in here, let me see, shipping settings, you can see where I went for this. Oh, well, that's great. Okay, we can do that. Um, you set up, so you, I have the free shipping over 35 guarantee. I also have the buyers pay for shipping. So shipping profiles are when you come in here and you pick your items and then you tell Etsy how to calculate the shipping. So for me, most of my things you can see here are shipped with this fast shipping, one to three processing days. All my stuff ships, it's, this, it's all the same size. Typically I've calculated um, by using a small digital scale. The average weight of my items is usually about three to five ounces. So to ship anything in my shop is around $3 and now 70 cents. It used to be 350. Um, so I set up one, like a one cost you can do where Etsy calculates the shipping. Uh, but I did just like, I know all my things cost the same and this way people don't feel like they know ahead of time what it's going to charge. So I did fixed shipping. So you can come in when you set up a profile, you name it something, you determine the processing time. This is you. Then you come down, you say, I do everything first class. It's the least expensive way for my things, which are all small. They fit into a small, you know, small envelope that goes in my mailbox, first class mail. It's around $3.50 for my items. You can also do um, calculated shipping where Etsy calculates your location to their location and it's going to be where whatever that number is. This is how it worked for me. Additional items. So if they buy two items, it charges them another dollar for shipping. And if they buy more than that, typically they're over 35 and the shipping is free. But I have padding in my shipping so that I don't lose money. I have padding. Okay. You shouldn't be losing money on anything that you opt into. You shouldn't lose money on free shipping. Shouldn't lose money on running Etsy ads. Like you need to have this calculated. 
if and if you want to offer the, the option to upgrade, you can do that here. I don't usually, if someone wants to upgrade for faster shipping, I have an additional listing in my shop. And like right here, this is my listing um, where they can upgrade, they pay additional fee. And then I do all of my shipping outside of Etsy, but you can do it on Etsy. So this, you set up a shipping profile and then you attach it to the listings that you want, which in my case is about a hundred and whatever that was, 106 listings. Um, so I got to fix this. I'm not sure what's going on here. But anyway, then um, if you want to make a new profile, you come here, calculate them. That's where Etsy determines the price based on where they live. You put your zip code in here, processing time. And then when it comes time to ship an order, so let's say this is these are my items in the queue right now, it's shop reviews, and then I got to send this snowflake out. When it's time to purchase, you come into the orders and you do get shipping label and you fill all this out. Okay, for me, I set up, I mean, all my stuff goes in the same packaging. And this is where Etsy used to get me really confused. Um, I don't do priority shipping. I just do, uh, yeah, see, it's not $8. It is less than that. So then I got to come in here and play a little bit. Small flat, maybe that was it. Yeah, for me, it was the small flat package like an envelope three dollars and fifty cents like i said that's all my shipping so i could buy the label here you review the purchase you go to the next screen you purchase it etsy takes it it's like they charge you for it out of the account i like to do all my shipping separately because that just mentally is better for me so i use um shipping easy <coughs> sorry shipping easy.com i love it i've been on there for years it's easy enough you get your shipping label there but if you're going to do that, you got to set up so that um, the buyer pays for it. I actually get more buy, I get more sales now with paid shipping than I did with free. And I think it's because most people know that free shipping is not free. There's no such thing as free. There's if even if you're using freebies and putting free stuff in your orders, that costs money to you. It's not free. Anyway, try one way. If free shipping works for you, keep it. If free shipping's not working, switch over to paid shipping and see what happens. You can easily do a bulk. So if you come into your listings, you can do a quick bulk edit and change. Like you come in here, you can get all, all the 40 items or you can do all every all 130 and you can come in here and change a shipping profile right here. You can change them all to free shipping or paid shipping, you can try, okay? It's worth trying because honestly, what works for me may not work for you. Okay, what questions you all have? I think you've all gone quiet. Let me see. So that was your question, I changed my, I also started getting, let me see. Yeah, turn off free shipping. I don't know why, It's the, it was the same products um, it was after I calculated that I was losing money on those, on all my products, really. I took the free shipping away. I increased my prices to add that, um, the labor. Then buyers don't typically know. They may get a notification that the price has changed, but it's not like Etsy says, okay, these spoons were $17, now they're 24 Most buyers, they look at so many shops, they don't pay attention to... Uh, a dollar here and there. And even if they do, anyone that's going to not buy from you because you need to price for profit, they're not your ideal customer. I know that's hard to hear. All right. Yep. Look into the shipping. Check out the pricing course. Also, um, in the plus group, I'll just pop over and see. I have a whole bunch of modules. I have a, all these resources that are included with your monthly fee for the plus group. So you don't have to. Um, buy multiple courses. Um, a lot of people don't want to, and some people don't want the monthly charge, so they'd rather buy an individual course. So I've got a little something for everyone, but let me just show you here. Let me look at the pricing stuff and I'll share my screen. Okay, so I need to remove. Now, see, I'm getting the hang of this, you guys. It only took me a month. Share screen, share screen, Chrome tab, Kartra. Yeah, baby. Now we're cooking. Okay, so this is what um, 
Let me show you that this is what the inside of the plus training portal look like. If you've been curious what, what goes on in here, this is what it looks like. You can see every lesson, there's four main lessons. Every lesson has at least six modules in it. For pricing, we've got a whole section in here about pricing. Okay, why can't I scroll down? That's weird. Okay, well, I'll do it this way. Pricing, there's resources. We talk about pricing a lot. This is one of the things that if you don't get it right, you're not going to feel great about your business long term because like me, spent six months working my butt off and and was not making enough money to make it feel like it was worth my while. Uh, so I've changed that. I, I tweak some things. I'm much happier now. It's not about, you know, oh, so-and-so is just trying to get, make money or get rich. It's, it's just about, you know, how much it takes for you, how much you need financially to make this business worthwhile. And you don't have to answer to anyone else. No one. Okay. All right. What other questions were there? Um, I'm going to go back to StreamYard and remove that. Any other questions that we wanted to talk about advertising? Let me find that question up above to see if you're still here. I don't have, it does says Facebook user. So um, you decided to start paid ads, only $1 a day, but you wanted to try it out. Okay, so my question to you is, if you're still on, what made you think that you wanted to try ads? You know, was there something, was there, you, you came to a point in your business, are you trying to increase traffic? Um, advertising is a normal business expense. Totally any business out there is doing some kind of advertising. So a paid ad, it's not a bad thing. What I will say is if what I think typically happens, people join Etsy and they are, they're looking around, they start to feel like the only way they're going to get seen is to pay for advertising. And that's not true. Maybe that's what Etsy wants. They want that revenue. And so they make it seem like you need to pay for ads. Um, but you don't. Okay. If you want to do advertising and you want to practice it, do like what you did here, start with $1 a day and pick the listings that already sell well. The ones that you think are written properly SEO, those are the listings you want to advertise. So if you feel like, okay, you know, this listing, I worked really hard on it. I think it's optimized. I use only things that auto populate. I, you know, researched my keywords. Um, I, I talked about what it is, who it's for, and what is the occasion. And you feel like it's good. Try advertising maybe a handful of listings, like three to five. For especially for a dollar a day, you're not going to get much bang for your buck with more than that because you set a dollar a day and Etsy takes that budget. And every time someone clicks on your ad, they take a bit of that dollar away. And depending on what time of day it is, what day, if there's a holiday weekend going on, the clicks cost more at different times. But Etsy doesn't tell us that. All they, all we get to do is say which listings and the dollar amount, and then they take money away as people click. So you could have two people click and then your budget's gone for the day, especially if you have a lot of listings. Okay, so it's advertising can be beneficial, but you have to do it with a strategy. Are you just wanting, you know, are you wanting more sales? Are you wanting more clicks? Do you have advertising costs baked into your your item price? If you don't, you could be pretty disappointed at the end of 30 days that you've paid, um, you've paid, you know, $80 for, let's say dollar a day, let's say you end up paying $40, $30 a month for ads and you either got one sale, it didn't cover it. When I run ads, I like my ad revenue to be twice what I paid in the ad. So if I end up paying $50 for the month for sales, I want to have at least $100 in revenue, if not more. Otherwise, it's not worth it. And I dial my ad budget down or I tweak them. Okay. I have about four listings advertised right now. I'm playing with different dollar values to see if they help. And then at the end of the month, um, so for you here that's making this comment, leave your ads on for at least 30 days. Otherwise, you can't, tell, you can't tell if they've been effective. And then look at the data that they bring in and you'll see what keywords are being used to click and you can even tweak that. 
All right. I think there's one more comment. Do you have an advice? Wait. Pricing at craft shows. That's a whole other conversation. Um, I don't, I mean, and then I gotta, I gotta get off here, but, um, pricing for craft shows, again, it's taking how much, what are your, what was the price of the show? What did you have to buy tables and, you know, drops and displays and, um, was there advertising and, and, you know, some people charge less in person, uh, or more in person. I think that's gotta be up to you. You, you know, what you need to make on that item to cover all of your costs. If you want to offer it less because you're not paying for Etsy fees, you can. But um, a craft show is probably way more expensive than your listing fee and your processing fee on Etsy. So you got to make that decision, but do it because you have the numbers in front of you, not just because you know someone told you, oh, they did this. All right, guys, so that's all I have for today. I'm going to jump off. We'll do this again next week. Um, and we'll just talk about the questions that come up in the group. I would love for you to check out the pricing course, or if you're interested in the plus group, let me know. I can drop that link um, as well, because trust me, we talk about pricing all the time in the plus group. Um, and it's not, it's not bad. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to make money in your business. I'll say it again. You got to pay yourself what you're worth. Anyone that's trying to make you feel bad for making a profit from your business is not, in my opinion, not anyone that um, that I want in my corner. And I, you know, I'm just going to say that with love. All right. Well, I'll talk to you guys next time. Let me know um, how I can help. We'll see you soon. Bye.